you very much for the presentation and, and thanks to the organizers for the invitation. Uh, so as, as Doron mentioned, I'm, I'm working at the Universitat Punto Fabra in Barcelona. This is a very recent uh, university, so we are celebrating the 25th anniversary. So I'm missing the celebration I'm here, but it's a pleasure to be here among you. So the title of my, my talk is uh, genetic, the, the Genetic Legacy of Jews in the Iberian Peninsula. So um, what I'm going to do is just to present a small part. I want to share some results of a small part of, of a project that, that we are uh, doing uh, right now. So uh, there is no uh, clear evidence of when the first Jews uh, were appeared in the Iberian Peninsula. So we know, it, and it's well documented, that during medieval times uh, there was a large community of Jews in the, in the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, the Sephardic Jews, they suffered from, from different persecutions, and uh, the worst of, of, of these persecutions was at the end of the 15th uh, century, and this was done by the so-called Catholic kings, uh, Isabel and Fernando, and who uh, created the regrettable Spanish and famous Spanish Inquisition. Okay? The Spanish Inquisition just forced uh, Jewish and also Muslims to leave the country or to convert to Christianity. Okay? So it is not very well known the number of, of Jews at that time in the Iberian Peninsula, and also it's not uh, very well known so how many of them just uh, were expelled from the from the Iberian Peninsula, mainly to the to the to the Mediterranean, as I in the previous talk uh, we've seen all these all these Sephardic Jews out of, of the Iberian Peninsula. But we don't know how many of them converted to Christianity <coughs> and remained in in Spain. Okay? So it, it's a, a, a difficult uh, question to answer, but the first genetic and exhaustive genetic analysis performed trying to answer this, this question was the one performed by Adams and, and, and collaborators, where they analyzed more than 1,000 Y chromosomes in the Iberian Peninsula in order to see if there was this, uh, this uh, Jewish ancestry and also the North African ancestry nowadays in the Iberian Peninsula. One of the, of the remarkable conclusions of this, of this uh, paper was that uh, they calculated that the Sephardic Jewish contribution nowadays in the Iberian Peninsula was around 20%, a large, a large amount. Okay. So this is a summary of the results of this paper. So here uh, there is the, the representation of the different samples uh, in the Iberian Peninsula that were analyzed and here, as you can see, there is a phylogeny of Y chromosomes as similar to, to the, the one that Doron has presented previously. So what we can see here in, this, in these individuals is that the, the most frequent uh, uh, haplogroup is this reddish one, or this red one, that are R1B haplogroup that is very common in, in, Western, in Western Europe. And in the Iberian Peninsula, is around 70% of the, of the Y chromosomes. But in this study, they realize when comparing with a sample of, of Sephardic Jews and also with a sample in North Africa that haplogroups in these Sephardic Jews and haplogroups in uh, North Africa were also present in the Iberian uh, samples, suggesting that this could be the descendants of those that converted in medieval times. So as a summary, what they uh, proposed is, is the following. So here you have a summary of the results. So most of the lineages in these uh, white uh, bars represent these R1B or similar haplogroups that are autochthonous in the Iberian Peninsula. But in, 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 in black, you can see the, uh, the North African legacy, and in gray, the uh, Jewish uh, legacy. Okay. There has been controversy about this, this Jewish legacy because this could happen also just by, by other uh, migrations since Neolithic times in, in the Middle East. Okay? So this could uh, be an uh, overrepresented, overrepresented percentage of this, of this uh, legacy. 
Okay. So at this point, we wanted also to address this question uh, using using the same tools but with a different different approach. Okay. So what I'm going to, to talk now about is about uh, a, a work that we did also working with the white chromosome but analyzing uh, surnames in a similar way as Doron presented before. Okay. So. The, the purpose of the, of the aim of the project was to use the Y chromosome variation in order to study surnames, and surnames were uh, selected uh, in, in the Catalan language. So we know that these surnames appear around 500, 1,000 years ago in this region. And also, I mean, they are uh, inherited paternally in the way that Y chromosome is inherited. So just to locate you, I mean, the Catalan language is, is uh, spoken <laughs> in the eastern part of the, of the Iberian Peninsula, a small part in, in southern France, Catalonia, most part of Valencia, the Balearic Islands, and the city, the Sardinian city of Alguero. So there are two main dialects, western and eastern, and the surnames, Catalan surnames, are easy, are easy to di differentiate from Spanish, uh, French, or Italian surnames, okay? So what we did in this project was to select 50 surnames, okay, and around 50 individuals uh, within each surname, okay. So the selection criteria was uh, was the following. So we uh, chosen those surnames that are, that has at least 500 carriers because if not, it would have been very difficult to, to find to find individuals volunteers in this in this uh, study. And also we search for different etymologic uh, criteria, so place names, landscape features, occupations, and so on. Okay? So this is the list of the 15 surnames that we analyzed. I'm not going to go in depth in all of them, just a general overview, but I want to drive your attention to these four words. Okay? So uh, this Struk, Maimo, Salom, and Vidal Catalan surnames. So Salom and Maimo, they have an Hebrew origin, okay? Estruk was a common first name of Jewish in medieval times in Catalonia. Okay. And finally, Vidal was reported to be one surname that was adopted by those Jews who converted to Christianity, okay? So I'm going to, uh, to show you just a general overview of the, of the, of the analysis we did and also, I will focus on these four uh, surnames in order to have an idea of the genetic legacy of Jews in the Americas. So, as I told you, so we, we chose 50 surnames, around 50 individuals for each surname, a total of 2,500 samples, and we genotyped <coughs> some uh, STRs in order to have haplotypes and, and some uh, SNPs in order to define the haplogroups in the way that for each individual we have the haplogroup and also the diversity within the haplotype. And so we have also the region where this individual was uh, born and the, and the, and the uh, four paternal uh, ancestors. So the main objective I'm going to focus, I'm not going to explain all, all, the, all the project, but I'm going to focus on those in, in, the, in these two objectives, so discover and quantify the processes that drive surname frequency uh, in this area, and if the founders of surnames that are linguistically Hebrew were Jewish uh, them, themselves. Okay, so for each for each surname, what we did was to construct a, a, a network in this way. So each circle represents haplotype and the size of the circle represent the number of individuals with this haplotype. So different colors represent different haplogroups, and the branch length represents the genetic distance between these haplotypes. We also define some lineages, and how uh, we define the lineage. So a lineage was uh, those haplotypes that separ were separated by two or less mutational steps. So if we take into account that the average mutation rate of the STRs we use is one in 688 years, we can assume that 
individuals within these uh, lineages, so they have a common a common orbit. Okay. So also we define major lineage, and this is an arbitrary an arbitrary uh, assumption. So a major lineage was was that lineage with more than well four or more individuals. Okay. Here I represent two examples, two surnames, Danes, which is a very unfrequent, rare uh, surname. So only. 526 individuals uh, in, in the area carry this surname. And what we see is that there are three main lineages, two of them that are major lineages. On the contrary, so here this surname, Bost, that, it, uh, that is uh, quite frequent. So we see a lot of diversity and very few individuals within these major lineages. So at the end, what we have is for each, uh, for each uh, surname, so we have some diversity within their surname and the frequency of major uh, individuals in major lineages. So this is a summary of the 50 surnames, but in order to summarize these results, so I'm presenting here the surname frequency versus the haplotype diversity. Here each dot represents each of the 50 surnames, okay? And what we see is that uh, the, the more frequent the, the, the surname is the more diverse the surname is, okay? Another way of representing that is to represent the surname frequency and the proportion on li of lineages in, ma in major uh, lineages, okay? Of individuals in, ma in major lineages. And we see that the most frequent, have, uh, the most frequent uh, surnames, they have less individuals in major, in major lineages. Again, these are the two examples that I presented before. So the Danes and the Bosch uh, um, surnames. So what we see here are very few lineages, very few diversity, and two major lineages. And most of the individuals are within these major lineages, whereas other frequent surnames, they have more diversity and less individuals within these major lineages. So what we did at this point was to calculate the genetic distance between these surnames. And here, each dot again represents a surname. And it's hard to see, but here in red, you have the general Catalan population. And here in red, also general Italian population. Okay? So when we compare these surnames to these populations, so we see that most of the, of the surnames just uh, uh, lie in this, in this group. And a few of them have larger genetic distances. When we represent that with the, with the frequency, the surname frequency, and again, with the distances, we see that these ones that are the, the, the less frequent are the, the ones with larger genetic <coughs> distances uh, to, the, to the rest. So as a general conclusion, so we see that the, the frequent surnames be, became frequent because they were founded multiple times. Okay, they were polyphenetic. This is not surprising if we see other, other examples or other studies, other similar studies, like this one done uh, in England, so where the more frequent uh, um, surnames were the more diverse. But this contrasts with, sorry, with the with another uh, study done in, in Ireland, where the most frequent uh, surnames were not the most diverse, meaning that these more frequent uh, um, surnames they had they had some uh, larger community. I mean the social social status and uh, spread the, the, the surname in the whole population. So given that uh, general uh, view, I'm going to focus on these four surnames in order to see if these four surnames that were uh, linguistically Hebrew so can represent uh, this genetic legacy of, of, of Jews in the neighboring peoples. So I'm going to start with the first one. So is this, is this uh, surname, it's Vidal, remember that this Vidal was recorded or reported to, to be uh, one of the surnames that was adopted by, uh, by Jewish uh, during this time. So what we see is that this Vidal is a, is a very frequent surname in, in, in Catalonia and is very diverse. So when we compare these individuals, these Vidal individuals, to a general Catalan population, uh, to a Sephardite, to Jewish, po uh, Jewish population, so what we did, we, we see is following. Here there are some some haplogroups represented, and their frequency and frequencies in 
Sephardic Jews, in Catalans, and in these Vidal individuals. As you see, most of these individuals, these Vidal individuals, they belong to this R1B hopper group, this hopper group that, that is very frequent in the Iberian Peninsula, okay, and also very frequent in Catalans. So we don't see any evidence of these individuals carrying this Vidal surname to be descendants of these Jews <coughs> in the Iberian Peninsula. Okay. So if we go to the, to the second one, to this Maimo, surname. Uh, so we see that this memo is less frequent, so there are some, some major major lineages, but when we compare that to Sephardic Jews or with Catalans, so what we see is a similar a similar landscape as the one that we saw uh, with, the, with the Vidal surname. Okay? So there is no evidence that these uh, uh, memo individuals, they have a, 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 a Jewish origin. Okay? The third one is the Salon one, so also a, a, a diverse, a diverse uh, a surname with several uh, major uh, lineages. And when we compare here to the, to the other population, so we, we saw a striking, a striking profile. So if some of these individuals, they, they belong, as the previous one, to the general boring, if you want, uh, Iberian, Iberian Hubble group, okay? But some of these individuals, they belong to one half group that is common in the, in, in the uh, Sephardic Jews, pointing or suggesting that maybe some of these uh, uh, Salon uh, individuals could be descendants of these uh, Sephardic Jews. But what was surprising also was that some individuals within this surname, they presented a half group that is not frequent in Jews, not frequent in Catalans, but it's very frequent in the Africans. Okay, suggesting that maybe also Muslims uh, that were uh, expelled from the Iberian Peninsula took also this this uh, surname. Okay, and finally the the Struck surname. So remember that this Struck was a common first name uh, in, in in medieval times in, in, in Jewish uh, population. So when we did the, the same analysis, what we saw was something like this. Okay? Here, we see clear evidence that these individuals, so they have some uh, uh, hopper groups that are frequent in the, in the Jewish, Sephardic Jewish population, and they don't present the common one in Catalans, so suggesting that there is evidence that may, maybe these individuals could be descendants of uh, these uh, Sephardic Jews that remained in the, the Iberian Peninsula and converted to, to Christianity. Okay? So, as a general conclusion, so with, but we see that with this exception of the stroke, and maybe with some exception of these Salon individuals, so we don't have evidence in the, other, in the, in the others of this uh, genetic legacy of Jewish in the Iberian Peninsula. So, what we are doing now is just to, to, to analyze. Uh, these individuals in a genome-wide uh, manner in order to have more more uh, uh, ideas about that, but maybe this would be for a, for a different uh, talk. So I want to acknowledge uh, Neil Soule, who was the PhD student, who was working uh, with that, and also Francesca Lafay, who was co-supervising the, the work, and also Jamo for the for the help in the, in the, in the work. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Could, could you go closer to the microphone? Yes. Thank you very much. What's the, the, the answer of these people? Uh, yeah, so after, after this was published, all the information was, was retrieved to every single individual because they, the project so allowed every single individual to have information about, the, about the, the, his, own, his own hopper group and the history of that. So the, 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 the answers were quite positive. They wanted to, to know more about that. So that, that's, that's, but it was a very positive answer.
I, I would say that it was too positive. <laughs> <laughs> In the way that they are phoning, they are sending emails, and I want to know more, I want to know more. Yeah. So. Some, some Jewish ancestry because it was, I mean, linguistically known and, and traditionally known as as, as, a, as, as a possible uh, Jewish uh, ancestry. But the, the stroke, despite it was a very common uh, historical known surname, um, first name in Jewish, so most of them didn't know that this was uh, the case. Yeah. Thank you, David. Thank you very much.